Hello, everyone. Welcome to Small Talk. Well, I'm very pleased to welcome back my friend who just happens to be uh, a musician who lives in New Zealand. And he's been on the show before, Ryan Neville. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Nancy. Thank you once again. It's always a pleasure catching up with you. So thank you. You're welcome. And this time I see you have somebody with you. And this is uh, Sandy Wilson. Hi, Sandy. Hello, Nancy. Nice to meet you. And it's nice to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you. So I have all these questions just prepared. I'm like, I'm so clever. Okay, thanks, Ryan, for preparing the questions. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so now, oh, wait a minute. Here, we're going to go start here, there. So you just you just did a, a jazz festival, is that right? Yes, it was last weekend. It was um, something we do every year, so it's always a pleasure. It's um, south of where we live, so we're in Christchurch in the South Island. Um, and they do it, yeah, once a year festival. We have about 28 bands go, and there's stages everywhere. It's just, you know, like a classic festival. It's a lot of fun. So um, the, uh, on the second, it rained on us, which was uh, made things a wee bit entertaining. So you can imagine being outdoors and having uh, a lot of equipment and a lot of dangerous equipment everywhere and things. But um, you know what? The amazing thing is people kept on dancing. Very good. So that was the whole band then, right? Yes, it was. Yes. Oh, wow. That must have been really, really fun. So, so uh, Sandy, have you, are you new to the band or have you always been with them? No, I've been oh, about four or five years now. So I've done a few of the Omaru Jazz Fest. So we always love going down there. Mm. It is, yeah, an annual thing. And that's fun. Very good. Uh, a, a bird, little bird told me, I think it was a, a kiwi. Is a kiwi a bird? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> that you have an album coming out next month? Yes, we do. So it's always um, exciting. It's number nine for us. Um, and it's Bare Bones album. It's acoustic versions of some of the pre-released um, songs over the years. So, you know, it's always a pleasure doing something a little bit different. And of course, um, yeah, Sandy and I have been working on that. It took us about ooh, probably eight months to kind of get it together. And uh, the release date is about sort of mid-April. So we're looking forward to releasing that to everyone. We've been releasing singles as they go, but there's some extra tracks on there that haven't been released. So it's always exciting to release something new. Yeah. And where can he people hear your videos or your CDs? Or your so we're fortunate enough to be on Spotify and Apple Music and all the other 12 digital stores. So um, you, you, anyone can find us around around the traps. Okay, so now on this uh, um, uh, new um, album, what are some of your favourites? What are you consenting? Ooh, Midnight Train comes to mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that, Sandy, Midnight Train. Um. Well, I suppose being kind of more blues based, I mean, there's always a, a train involved. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and with being one of our own songs and to release it acoustically again, that was yeah, a bit of a treat to yeah. do a different version. Yeah. Um, As I said, it's always fun, isn't it, releasing something new, but this time it was something old but new. We kind of have changed some of these a little bit. So, um, yeah, Midnight Train was just like a different version, slowed down, wasn't it? And, yeah, yeah so yeah. it's... And, and these so, yeah. are all, sorry, Ryan. Uh, these are sorry. all these are all songs that you wrote. Yes, yes. That uh, probably over the last five or six years worth of uh, music. So we kind of handpicked off different albums that have been successful for us. Mm -hmm. um, hard, isn't it, to pick your favourites? Yeah. You know, it's like having kids, isn't it, and going that one's my favourite. But you know, there are certainly <laughs> some that we prefer to play okay. live and things like that. They're a bit more. Um, but you know, upbeat and just have a bit of a spark or a bit of a uh, connection, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right. So when you're up on stage performing, this is for either one of you, and the and the uh, people get up and dance. How does that make you feel? That's a real buzz, isn't it? <laughs> I sort of think, well, if I can entertain the crowd and they are enjoying it, it's like, well, my job is done. You know, I mean, it's it's fun playing for yourself and for the band but I kind of feel if you've got that connection to the crowd that's just yeah creme de la creme isn't it yeah I think that's a good word that having that connection and seeing people and uh, you know have fun and enjoy themselves I think that's the whole reason why I perform I think to you know share that magic we call you know music mm, for sure mm. yeah um okay so now you're just a couple of weeks away from your American tour right yes Yes, we are. It's getting closer all the time. You know what it's like. You, you plan anything and you think you've got months to go and then sort of the last couple of weeks panic of getting ready. So <laughs> we're almost there. Um, <laughs> but yes. Are you? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah. But it is. Where are you going to start on, the, on the, this tour? 
Well, we first we fly into Los Angeles, um, and then basically we go to Dallas, um, Fort Worth. So we have a band there that we um, catch up with um, the Texas Back Road um, band. So we do a couple of shows with them, and uh, just out of Dallas, so Dallas, Fort Worth. And um, and then we go to Memphis, which we're really looking forward to doing. Uh, it's been a wee while since we've been there. Um, and then from there, where do we fly to? Back to Texas. Well, back to Texas, yeah. And then across to Vegas for two nights in Vegas. Yeah, performing two nights in Vegas, which is always um, a lot of fun uh, if you've been to Las Vegas. And uh, and then we go to a lovely little winery, uh, Kula Winery, uh, just out of San Francisco. So... 12 dates in, in all, so it's going to be a very busy time. We're away for three weeks, so it's going to be quite a busy uh, travel play, travel play kind of thing. But, yeah, it's it's what we do and what we enjoy, so it's a great fun. Well, we Canadians are feeling very neglected, you know. I know, and I keep promising you, don't I? Every time we speak, yeah. Nancy, I... <laughs> San Francisco, come down for a, a weekend. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll see you there. It would be so awesome. I think it would be fantastic, right? Okay, oh, yeah. So, yeah, Sandy, now you uh, uh, play multiple instruments, right? Yes, yeah, I do. What? So, well, yeah, probably playing piano as a, a preschooler. As soon as I could sit on the piano still, I was up there. <laughs> and then guitar probably came along about the same age. He was about five or six. So um, it's great to be able to play both of those on the on the tour. So I've got a keyboard and um, guitar and then sing as well. So um, it's always really enjoyable to be able to do the whole shebang. So I think we've got um, keyboards and all the gear. And she always the, the towns. She always forgets to mention the other things that she plays as well. So things like ukulele and so on. So <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that a lot of people that play guitar can also will also sometimes play the ukulele. Is that a normal thing? Um, well, I guess I teach music in school, so a lot of kids start on ukulele. So that's a bit of a transition mm -hmm. for them. Um, onto guitar but um in most cases string instruments are similar in, in ways so it's kind of uh, easy enough and ukulele tends to be less fingers because they're smaller so a lot of people find that a wee bit easier than the guitar yeah. and things yeah and it's fun. when i think back about well, like when i was a young teen i know didn't know anybody who played the ukulele so really? I don't know if that's fairly a newer thing or what i think it is up and coming more here there's like ukulele orchestras yes um so not just for the children but for adults too there's yeah. a lot of clubs you can go along to for an evening and bring a ukulele along and have a play along sort of um that's more yeah more so now probably than, oh, than we right. so sandy you're also um a music teacher is that correct yes yeah see, i've got about 100 little students, students. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> That's pretty full on. Yes, I'll teach you. Yeah. Cool. So what instruments are you teaching? Um, well, that's piano, guitar, and ukulele. Oh, all three. Okay. So yeah. now, do you have uh, any students that, well, wait, first of all, how long have you been doing that? Oh, for years. I think I started decades, just quietly. <laughs> yeah. So have there ever been a student where you think, oh, my gosh, they just have it? They just have it? Um, yeah. A few for piano, and of course we do concerts at the school. So they always, you know, I'm always encouraging them to do that because um, you know that's, that's a big skill that they can add to just being able to play, but to perform. And of course, the parents love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. there's the odd, <laughs> and of course there's the odd ones that are the the other extreme. <laughs> Never yeah. bring their in. Don't <laughs> practice. Come on. <laughs> uh, what age group are they? Um, well, the schools, I'm just, um, or primary school, so that's the first um, school, so they're about seven, between about seven and 12-year-olds, mostly, yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, now, let's see, you travel a lot with the with the um, ne Ryan Neville's of Midnight Blues Band, correct? Yes. And yeah. I believe you have some duos, the two of you just do, do not just, you also do duos with Ryan? Yes. Yeah. That's right, yep, we've got our or Southern Sky duo, so we do that. Um, yeah, the band travels a bit, so that's sort of like um, when you've got a passion for music, that's sort of um, your new reality, <laughs> but it's 99% music. Um, it's fantastic and to be able to travel and then do the duo as well. Yeah, right? so it's good fun, yeah, isn't it? To the States, so it's... Yeah. 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 Do, you, uh, do you like being on the road? Oh, I love it, Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah. yeah. reality of living um, everyday life and being on the road, which is kind of <laughs> it's getting more and more sort yeah. of performing, which is yeah. <laughs> so. It can be quite hard to kind of uh, work in those two worlds, you know, when you, when you yeah. get back home, you want to go out again, and when you go out again, you want to come back home. So it's a uh, yeah, and that's that highs and lows, I guess. But um, yeah, it kind of keeps us going, doesn't it? <laughs> Right. So that same Kiwi bird told me that you uh, you have a diploma in jazz, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a few years ago, <laughs> but yeah, that was um, yeah, an interesting experience because it was um, so full on. I guess like a lot of learning is, but it, um, this is like music twenty four seven, which is all day, every day, because you had performances. Okay. So you're mostly focused on that because you you had to play in front of a school, <laughs> so that took over everything. Um, but just learning the history and just different aspects of well, jazz and blues. And, of course, that's where a lot of today's music came from. So to dig deeper and sort of cover the whole the whole area. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So as you can imagine, Sandy brings the uh, jazz to our to our blues <laughs> band and, and to our duo. So those uh, jazz bands, you, you'd be very impressed <laughs> to see Sandy play. So. Very good, yeah. So Ryan, back to you now. Okay, so this will be your your fourth U.S. tour. Is that correct? Yes, it is. There was a little gap in between those years, um, just you know the whole COVID thing, of course. But um, so it's been a couple of years since I've been there. But I promised him when I'd go back. So of course, this time's even better to be taking Sandy with me. So um, yes, yeah, so I said it's one of my favorite places to um, play a course. And you know, it's like you travel often and you get to meet um, friends that you then call family and. Uh, uh, yeah, so you kind of feel so you need to go go back and catch up and see everyone again and play in the, in the places that you enjoyed. So, yeah, so this is number four. Very good, yeah. Uh, just off, this is off the topic a little bit. You know, when I listen to you talk, like every once in a while, I have to really listen because I'm not sure if I heard the word correctly, right? Because of the accent. Do you people have that same problem with people who don't speak your language? Like, do I, do you find it easy to understand me? Yes. Okay. Yes, I think so. I think that that's a very good question. I think possibly because we were brought up on a lot of, um, you know, international TV. So it kind of acts or something that we picked up on and maybe the whole Kiwi mm -hmm. accent hasn't been uh, as widely spread, I guess. So, yes, but no, I, I know what you mean. I come back off the plane from anywhere and I do really hear that typical Kiwi accent. So I totally understand what, what you mean, but we can we can completely understand every word that, that, that you say. Right. Well, I can see, I can hear the difference between the, you and Sandy. And really? I'm not sure if it's because I'm, I am talk to you more often, Ryan, you know, that Maybe. I find you a little bit easier to understand. So that might be just used to you, right? Yes. Because yes. was it Lacey that I spoke to that I also had a little bit of problem understanding her? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's funny that yeah. I, do, I do have a slight, let's say a slight oh. American accent. So <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I just find it very curious you know for me I uh, when I grew up in New Brunswick and um, we although we were brought up English we kind of had many words that were kind of had a French to it and then yes. I, I lived in basically lived in Montreal from the time I was eight till my late 20s so we spoke both languages so when I come out um, east west sorry people would say oh you're you're French aren't you immediately because they could hear that French but I think that's what? gone now, you know. But when you when you speak more than one language, whatever, you know, sometimes that, people can hear that, right? Yeah, that must oh, wow. get very, uh, very yeah, confusing to uh, do to switch um from from one to, uh, yeah. to the other. It must be awkward. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, what? Let's see. Where were we going with this now? Okay, so question for you again. What what is it about the uh, going back to the tour in the U.S. that makes you want to keep going back? I think um, the crowds. I mean, a lot of uh, what what we perform is blues, so therefore um, there's a, a massive blues audience there. So for me, a big part of it is that uh, I love the fact of that. Um, you know, there's so many beautiful blues venues in that there. So for me, it's the excitement of doing that. Uh, so I think, yeah, it's really that. And it's connecting with those people again that um, came out to see us last time. And, you know, that kind of, you kind of become friends and connected with them, I guess. So, yeah, it's just it's a bigger place. Of course, we're quite small here. So to be able to spread wider and to travel and to drive and things like that, 
I think that's the reason why I keep heading back there. And as I said, the um, you know, now we're kind of what we call family in that there now as well. So that's a big pull for sure. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, I have a friend who started a, a, a blues uh, association, I guess, where bands can go in Abbotsford, which is next to Chilliwack, at the city next to Chilliwack, because she said there wasn't enough live performances here for, for blues, you know? So it was nice to know that that um, a lot of people want to hear it, right? Blues and and also jazz as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And isn't it good? You know, there's so many different, I mean, there's so many parts of the world now that are starting to do these jazz and blues festivals, which is just fantastic. So it's, yeah, we're proud to see that happening everywhere now, which is, which is great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So um, other than this album that you're coming up really soon, are you planning on another one after that? Well, that's a similar. No, and I know that sounds a bit uh, much, but it's kind of, um, yes, it's number 10. So we've been kind of in the background writing that as we go and get inspired by all different things. So that is more of a band. Um, so the Midnight Blues Band, uh, we're putting together these songs and we've released um, the Mother Road already off the album. So in this day and age, it's about, it tends to be about releasing often. So, um, and of course, you know, you try and kind of hold the reins a bit some, sometimes in songs because it's timing and all those sorts of things. So that's why we've got the, the album's just about done. Um, but of course, we're holding off. Um, once we get back, we'll start to, to do the finishing touches on album number 10. Hasn't even been named yet. So um, so, it's, so it's that uh, new. But there's some really good songs and some very different songs than our acoustic. This is a full band sound, and we're going for a different style of blues this time. And you know, and Sandy on board, throwing in a wee bit of jazz and things like that as well. So yeah, yeah that's a to bring something a little different too, right? Sorry, yeah. keep interrupting. I, I apologize. Um, okay, so let's let's let me see now. Okay, so when you're back in the U.S. on your tour, do you jump straight into the Mojo tour? Yes, so that has started. So what we're doing is just sort of taking a wee bit of a, a um, sideline into uh, into this um, trip to the States. And so, yeah, so Mojo is this year's tour for our band, for uh, Midnight Blues Band. Um, and that's going to be throughout uh, New Zealand. So we're hoping to um, include the North Island this year. Two of the dates have already started. So we kind of put pause for a month while, while we go to the USA. And then we jump straight back into the Mojo uh, tour, Very which good. is... Uh, our show with uh, lots of you know lights and, and lots of action and then we hire out venues and theatres so we're very really spoiled to be doing a couple more festivals this year as well which mm -hmm. has been lots of fun. Cool yeah I think that's all the questions I have oh no wait a minute I just happen to have one more question. Uh oh. <laughs> yes it's about spider farts. <laughs> I've heard about this. No, no here's the thing oh, no. I picked this being like a a uh, uh, one hit wonder, you you do you remember the song Fish Heads? Yes. Fish Head or, or Cows with Guns, like they were so much fun, you know. It and was... I think this could be the same type of thing. That's so, true. I, We've I uh... kind of started, but it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because if if I remember correctly, you were going to sing it. We were going to send it to you, and you're going to record your vocals on it. No, I don't. You can't listen to me sing. It would hurt everybody's ears. <laughs> you don't I'm... have a good singing voice. I can give you some words. I can't sing, oh. no, seriously, though. I'm not a singer. Um, and and if I could sing, like I'm, I can sometimes follow somebody, you know, sing along with somebody else. But on my own, forget it. I <laughs> totally forget. I just, but I just think it would be so much fun. I'll have to go to somebody else. That's all there is to it, Ryan. All right, we will write that song. We've been promising you for a long time, so so let's get the song done. Absolutely. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, people. Uh, Ryan, do you have one last thing I forgot? Do you have a website? Yes, so Ryan Neville Showband.co.nz. And we're all over the internet, so on Twitter and um, TikTok and Instagram and everything else, everything in between. Um, so if you just type in Ryan Neville, and the Midnight Blues or Ryan Neville Show Band, you'll be able to connect with us. Very good, yeah. So thank you, the two of you. Just stay on camera, please. So in the audience, you. you've been listening to my wonderful friend from New Zealand, uh, Ryan Neville, and the, with the, who, who, who has a band, the Midnight Blues Band, and also with him for the first time is Sandy Wilson. So I'd like to thank both of them for being here. Thank you for watching the show. I hope you continue to do so. Take care, everyone, and peace out.